Hey guys, it's Ro. Today we're gonna be making some DIY treats from my first song, Perfect Together. In the lyrics of the song, I mention a bunch of food pairings that I love that go together that I just think are better together than they are apart. And I thought it would be fun to make some of them with you guys. So let's get started. The first treat that we're gonna be making are these homemade graham cracker marshmallow cookies. We are gonna make these in two parts, starting with homemade marshmallows. So the things you'll need will be three Three cups of sugar, one and a fourth cups of light corn syrup, powdered sugar for dusting all the marshmallows, two measurements of three fourths cup of water because we're going to be adding them at different times, four packets of unflavored gelatin, two tablespoons of vanilla extract, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and a candy thermometer. The first thing that we're gonna do is pour our three-fourths cup of water and the four packets of gelatin into this big mixing bowl and set it off to the side. Then we're gonna head over to the stove to make our candy mixture. To make the candy mixture, place a medium-sized saucepan on the stove and add your sugar, your light corn syrup, a teaspoon of salt, and another three-fourths cup of water. Mix together until everything's combined. Then turn on the heat to medium-high and stir together until it starts to boil. Once it reaches a boil, stop mixing and let the mixture reach 238 degrees. Once it reaches 238 degrees, remove from heat and bring it back over to the bacon station. Now we are gonna slowly mix our gelatin mixture on a low speed and we're gonna slowly add our candy mixture all together. Once you've added all the candy mixture, you are gonna beat for 12 minutes, gradually increasing the speed. It will turn from this kind of light yellow, beigey color to a white looking like a meringue. Now that our marshmallow mixture is all done, we are gonna pour it into a greased pan with a piece of parchment paper, pour it all in there, and then we're gonna stick it in the fridge for three hours to chill. And while it's chilling, we are gonna make our graham cracker cookies. The things that you'll need for the homemade graham crackers will be one and three-fourths cup of whole wheat pastry flour, a quarter cup of honey, a third cup of brown sugar, six tablespoons of butter, a third cup of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of milk, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of orange juice, three-fourths teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and two heart-shaped cookie cutters, one big and one small. In a big mixing bowl, we are gonna combine our flours, cinnamon, salt, baking powder, baking soda, and our brown sugar, and whisk it all together till it's evenly combined. Now we're gonna roll up our sleeves, time to get our hands in there. We're gonna take our butter, add it to our flour mixture. Boop, oh, and now we're gonna use our hands and mix it together. Once it's mixed together, we're gonna add the rest of our wet ingredients. We're gonna start off mixing with a wooden spoon, but we're gonna switch to our hands once the honey's mixed in a little better. Once you've rolled your cookie dough into a ball, you're gonna roll it up in a piece of cling wrap and stick it in the fridge for 30 minutes to chill. I just took the dough out of the fridge and I put it on top of a piece of parchment paper so it won't stick to the surface. And now we're gonna roll it flat and cut out our cookies. To make these cookies, you're gonna need two for each set. So one's gonna be the bottom, one's gonna be the top. The bottom one, you'll just leave it plain so you can transfer half of these to your baking sheet. And then the other half, you take your little heart and you're gonna cut them right in the middle. Then you're gonna take your fork and to make it look like a graham cracker, poke little holes on the top. Once you got all of your cookies cut out, you're gonna heat your oven to 350 and bake for 10 minutes or until they turn golden brown. Our tray of marshmallows have set, they've chilled in the fridge, and now we're gonna cut out little heart marshmallows using the same cookie cutter as we used with the cookies. The first thing that we're gonna do is take a little bit of powdered sugar, spread it on top of the surface so that the marshmallows won't stick. Then you're gonna take your pan, flip it upside down, peel off off the excess parchment paper, spread a little additional powdered sugar on the top, take that cookie cutter, and wiggle, 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 yeah! Be sure to remember to roll the edges in the powdered sugar so that the whole marshmallow heart is covered. Our cookies are fresh out of the oven, they've had plenty of time to cool, and now we are going to assemble. This part is totally optional, but I'm gonna take a little bit of chocolate, and I'm gonna put it on the bottom of our cookie, and the top to keep everything stuck together, and it will kind of taste like a shamor. And now I'm gonna do this to the rest of the cookies. For our next treat, we're gonna be making sweetheart apple pie. The things you will need will be some apples, I'm using gala apples, two pre-made pie crusts, 
three heart-shaped pie plates. I'm gonna be making three little mini pies, but you can either do this or make one big pie. It's up to you. Three tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, two tablespoons of butter, a third cup of brown sugar, a third cup of sugar, a third cup of flour, and a little bit of egg wash. First thing that we're gonna do is grease our pie pan. And just a reminder, this recipe can make one large apple pie, or what I've done is I have three little mini pies because I found these cute little heart pans which are oven safe and they're so cute, I had to use them. So we're gonna grease them. I'm just taking a little bit of baking spray. Spray them. Boop, boop. Once you've got your pie pans greased, we're gonna set them off to the side and we're gonna make our apple pie filling. Yum, 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 yum. Now I'm going to peel, cut, and dice my apples. Dicing is totally optional. I'm just choosing to do that because my little heart-shaped pan is a little bit smaller. Once we've got all the apples chopped up, the first thing that we're gonna do is add our lemon juice. Take two spoons, mix it up, and now we're gonna add sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> Now we're gonna mix our apple filling all together until it's evenly combined, and then we're gonna roll out our pie crust. It's refrigerated pie crust, it's really easy to use. You just can take your little pie plate, put the dough in the middle, gently press it down on all the sides. Then we're gonna take some baking scissors, cut off your extra dough, to do just like that. Then I'm gonna do this to my other two pie plates. And now we're gonna fill our little pies. You're gonna take some apple filling and just scoop them into your pie. Now that we've got our pies filled, we're gonna add a little bit of butter. So I got my little butter here and a knife, and we're just gonna cut little squares. And you're just gonna put a few of them right on the top. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to make a traditional pie top lattice. These are so cool and they're very, very easy. They kind of remind me of basket weaving. So you're gonna roll out your pie crust, just like that. And then you can either use a knife to cut thin strips or I found this device, how cool is this, with multiple rollers so that they're all even. So look at this, do, 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 do. this thing is amazing. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in checking one of these out. I cut them in half because I'm using these smaller dishes, but if you're using a full size pie, just leave them this size. So you're just gonna pick up a bunch of these little guys, put them right on top. Here's the fun part, now for the weaving. You're gonna pull up every other one. So we'll pull up this one and this one, and then you're gonna lay it down. You're gonna pull them back, to do And now you're gonna pull up the opposite ones. So this one, this one, and this one. And then you're just gonna continue to do that pattern for the rest of the pie, alternating. Now with your fingers, just pinch the edges of your pie crust. Now we're gonna take a little basting brush, and I've got a little egg wash over here, just a little egg and water, and we're just gonna lightly brush the edges of the pie crust all the way around. Heat your oven to 420 and bake for about 30 minutes, but just keep your eye on it. As soon as they start to turn a golden brown, they are ready, and because these are a little bit smaller, just keep your eye on it. Also, if the outside edge of your pie starts to darken quicker than the middle, then you can put a little bit of tin foil over the edges to protect it. Our fresh sweetheart pies are out of the oven, but what's the point of apple pie without the ice cream on the side? So I'm gonna get a little ice cream. Boop! Nom 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 nom. It's time for a drink recipe. We're gonna be making yummy strawberry smoothies because if you were a strawberry, then I would be a smoothie. The things you will need will be some mason jars, straws, frozen strawberries, fresh strawberries for your garnish, one cup of orange juice, Greek yogurt, and one banana. I love this recipe because it's so easy to make. The first thing that we're gonna do is add a few scoops of Greek yogurt into our blender. Add one banana, orange juice, and a handful of frozen strawberries. And if you want to put a little extra, that's okay. Because I have a small hand. So, need a couple of those. Power, blend. Ah! Now we're gonna fill up our mason jars. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. Then you're gonna take your fresh strawberries and a sharp cutting knife. You're gonna make a slice right down the middle. Be careful, don't get your fingers. And now you're just gonna stick it on the side of the cup as a garnish. Oh, it's so cute. And then we're gonna add a little straw for the final touch. Da -da! This looks just like the drink that I was drinking in the music video, strawberry smoothie, when I got a little strawberry leaf stuck in my teeth. Oh. 
cheers. The last recipe is waffle fry sliders. I love this recipe because it's so simple and it's a really unique appetizer. The things you'll need will be one bag of waffle fries, one pound of ground beef, or you can substitute it for anything you'd like, like ground turkey, one red onion, tomatoes, lettuce, cheddar cheese, dill pickle chips, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, you know what I mean, half a teaspoon of onion powder, two cloves of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and some toothpicks. The first thing that we're gonna do is bake our waffle fries. So here I've got some frozen waffle fries and a baking sheet. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of waffle fries on here. You don't need to grease your pan. Then you're gonna heat your oven to 425 and bake for 30 minutes. Around 15 minutes, about halfway through, you wanna flip them over. While our waffle fries are baking, we are gonna be making our meat patties. So I've got a bowl here and we're gonna mix together these ingredients with our hands. So first I'm gonna add the ground beef. Then I'm gonna mix in our garlic. Now add your Worcestershire sauce and our salt and pepper. Mix it together until everything is well combined. Break off a piece about the size of a golf ball roll it and then stick it on the sheet and make as many as you'd like. Before we head over to the stove and cook these, we're gonna set them off to the side and we're gonna cut up some veggies and cheese. Oh yeah, I'm gonna start with my cheddar cheese. And we want square shape for our little sliders, so I'm just gonna cut off the excess to make it a square. Now we're gonna cut thin slices to put on our little sliders. We're gonna cut some little tomatoes. So what you're gonna do is turn the tomato on its side. We're just gonna cut little round slices to put on our slider. Now we're gonna cut our onion, and remember I'm only using the inner onion because I want them to be smaller to fit on the slider, but you can use the extra for something else, like an omelet. Now I'm just gonna put these in here, and we're gonna take our little meat patties and head over to the stove. Place a large saucepan on top of your burner, add some oil, and turn your burner onto medium heat. Once your pan is hot, place your patties down and press them flat. Once they've cooked for a few minutes, flip them over and cook them for a few more. Then place your cheese on top, and if your cheese needs a little help, you can add a little bit of water to your pan and place a cover on the top. After melted, move your little patties over to a plate, cook the rest of your patties, and head back over to the baking station. Time to assemble, I love these. So instead of using buns, we are using the waffle fries. We're gonna go waffle fry, lettuce pickle, burger, tomato, onion, waffle fry. Ta-da! Here are the DIY perfect together treats that we made today. We made homemade graham cracker and marshmallow cookies, sweetheart apple pie, strawberry smoothies, and waffle fry sliders. I hope you guys liked them. I absolutely love these food pairings and they're so special because they're from the song Perfect Together. Let me know in the comments below if you have any favorite food pairings like peanut butter and jelly or cookies and milk or mac and cheese. That's one of my favorites. I will be posting lots of pictures of these creations on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And if you guys make these, please send me photos. I love to reblog them and repost them. I just love seeing your baking creations. I get a big kick out of it. Also, I will be posting a link in the description to the music video Perfect Together, so you could go check it out there. And I will be posting a link to the song on iTunes, where if you'd like to show your support, you can download it. All right, thanks again, you guys. Bye-bye. If you were strawberries, then I would be the smoothie. Mmm.